Hello everyone, today is uh, Thursday, May 9th, uh, 4.30 in the afternoon here in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, mail day again, I have some interesting mail from the United States Penitentiary from uh, Mr. Uh, Ross Ulbricht. And he has a nice little uh, note on the back that says, feel free to share this one. So I don't know what's inside, but uh, let's find out together. So mail takes a while to get from the U.S. It's dated uh, April 15th, so it's uh, currently May 9th, so it's been a couple of weeks. This is uh, Roger. Uh, once again, I am humbled by your generosity and support. I just got word that you are organizing a benefit concert for me in L.A. That is so exciting. At every turn, you've been there for me through this journey. I can't thank you enough, and I can't wait to hear about the concert. Can you imagine if the president released me beforehand? Then I could crash the party and tell everyone prison stories and all my thoughts on the criminal justice reform. There's a lot to discuss. Prison doesn't get easier, but I am keeping my chin up. With friends like you out there, I feel it is just a matter of time before this nightmare is behind me and I can start, uh, I can start living again. Thank you for giving me hope. With respect, Ross. So that's the letter there. Um, so I guess a couple of my own thoughts there. So uh, he referred to his, uh, you know, his nightmare, wanting his nightmare to be behind him. And so Ross is at a United States penitentiary. So the penitentiary is like the really, really rough prison. So uh, much, much, much rougher, more difficult than where I was when I spent my uh, 10 months there. Um, I heard stories about the penitentiary, so the the people at the prison where I was referred to it as gladiator school, and uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it's a, a topic for a whole other video. Some of the stories I heard, or there's you know other videos on YouTube with uh, people telling stories of their time there, but uh, I can only imagine how how difficult and rough it is in the penitentiary uh, there for Ross, and I've, he's been in what six years now since they arrested him, I think. So it's been a while. And uh, I have some more to add, but I guess it'll be in another video because I, I want to get permission from Ross's mom in regards to that. But uh, anyhow, it's not just Ross. There's like a million plus nonviolent victimless crime perpetrators that are in prison right now today for hurting nobody, right? So like, uh, let's let all of them out of prison and let's realize that it's the lawmakers and the police and the judges that are imprisoning these peaceful people for having hurt no one. They are the criminal aggressors, uh, not the people that are being held in prison. So uh, I think people need to start pointing that out and realizing that. And if you're a police officer watching this video, like look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, when you put someone in prison or arrest somebody for you know having a plant that makes them feel happy or buying and selling a white powder that makes people feel happy, are you the good guy for doing that? And I would argue very strongly, no, you're the bad guy for doing that. Just like the people that were arresting people for drinking alcohol when alcohol was illegal in the USA were the bad people for doing such a thing. And just because some people get together and write down words on a piece of paper and call it a law, that doesn't alter morality one bit. And if people have the right to drink alcohol, they have the right to smoke marijuana, they have the right to smoke crack because their lives and their bodies belong to them and their lives and their bodies don't belong to the politicians or the police officers or any of these other people. And uh, I think more and more people need to speak out and say that so that people can see the, the war on drugs for what it is. It's a war on your friends, your family, your kids, your neighbors. Uh, it's a war on everybody. And it just uh, serves to perpetuate the, the criminal justice industrial complex, right? Um, if you look at it, who are the people that are the most opposed to, the, to ending the war on drugs. It's the police officers' unions, the prison guard unions, the prisons themselves, right? Uh, and all the, the politicians and, and people that are, you know, involved in the criminal justice system. It's all the people that make money from the war on drugs are the only ones that are opposed to ending the war on drugs. So uh, I think it was Mark Twain or somebody like that. He said the most difficult thing to get someone to understand is that which uh, understanding would... Uh, 
affect his ability to earn a living or something along those lines. He said it much more eloquently than I did, but uh, I think that's the case here with all these cops and prison guards and whatnot. If they realized, the, if they admitted that the war on drugs was horribly immoral, they'd have to go and find honest work and it would affect their ability to earn a living. So they uh, are economically incentivized not to, to see it for what it is. But uh, the rest of us can see it for what it is and we should speak out for what it is. So uh, if you like this message, uh, share it with a friend and tell your friends and family and uh, go and get there's you can get it online for free the anatomy of the state by murray rothbard or i think it's like 99 cents on amazon if you want the kindle edition go go and read that book uh or another good one uh the most dangerous superstition by larkin rose is another good one either, either of those will really help you see the world more clearly so anyhow thank you guys for listening